Hi, I'm David Gerard, and this is Pivot to AI, coming to you daily. Today, the fabulous market opportunities in people just not paying for their chatbots. Menlo Ventures is a venture capital firm. They've released what purports to be a survey. 2025, the state of consumer AI. When they say AI, they mean large language models, chatbots. The subtitle is AI's consumer tipping point has arrived. So that's a hopeful statement. It's not one these numbers actually show. The write-up is a pile of naked promotional hype. But here's the takeaways. There are actually a ton of ordinary US consumers who have used the chatbot at least once in the past six months. 20% of them use it daily. This is because the chatbots are free and convenient. Consumers use chatbots for casual things. They're toys. Only 3% of chatbot users pay anything. Though that number is a bit weird, as we'll get to. They didn't actually ask if people paid for their chatbots. Then they talk about the paying percentage a whole lot. Menlo engaged Morning Consult to survey 5,031 Americans. Morning Consult is a real market research firm. It's been around a while, though the front page of their website is now a chatbot prompt. Morning Consult corrected the results for demographics, but that's normal and probably fine. Now, let's take the numbers seriously, probably more seriously than Menlo did. Let's assume the sample is a good, fair sample, and that this actually reflects how the American populace uses chatbots. So, quote, more than half of American adults, 61%, have used AI in the past six months, and nearly one in five rely on it every day. That's pretty significant. But Menlo says that only 3% of those are willing to pay for it. That would be 15% of the daily users. Why do ordinary users use chatbots? They're convenient. They're just there. Google has chosen to just not work as a search engine anymore. Gemini is free and it's there. Google is shoving it in your face. There's a few little details. The people they asked can't tell the large language model chatbots like ChatGPT or Gemini from the old keyword bot assistants like Alexa and Siri. The people call all of these AI. But Dig this logical leap from Menlo. Quote, This is no longer experimentation. It's habit formation at an unprecedented scale. Unquote. Maybe? Or maybe it's a toy and they use it because it's free. Then Menlo takes these US numbers and multiplies them by the whole population of the Earth, as if everyone else on Earth is a variety of American. Quote, Scaled globally, that translates to 1.7 to 1.8 billion people who've used AI tools, with 500 to 600 million engaging daily. Unquote. So that's just unjustified. You can't actually do that with this number. But that big number, not the US totals they actually measured, is the number at Menlo proceeds to speculate on wildly. Quote, 1.8 billion users at an average monthly subscription cost of $20 per month equals $432 billion a year. Today's $12 billion market indicates that only about 3% pay for premium services. A strikingly low conversion rate and one of the largest and fastest emerging monetization gaps in recent consumer tech history. So what they just did there was, even the 3% number is a bit of a funny number. Menlo did not ask in the survey if people were paying customers. They just surmised the number after the fact. That's very weird. If this is Menlo's big number, why didn't they even ask if people were subscribers? It's like they were desperately trying after the fact to make up some positive spin. If you're wondering about the writing style here, Claude Sonnet 4 is listed as one of the authors. That phrase, largest and fastest emerging monetization gap, is what Menlo's blog post is about. That's the takeaway. Menlo puts all its effort into making out that AI's 
massive failure to sell to ordinary people for money is just a market opportunity and not evidence that the market of paying customers doesn't want to buy yet another monthly subscription for a casual toy. Menlo puts generative AI at a $12 billion paying market so far. But compare that to the investment into generative AI on total, on the order of half a trillion dollars so far that was just set on fire. For comparison, Ed Zitron figures the total stated revenue for all of generative AI at $8 billion, if you don't count what OpenAI spends at Azure, and that's with a stated $327 billion spent. So Menlo's figures seem to be of the right magnitude. So the big thing Menlo is pushing here is that there are market opportunities for their portfolio companies. How can they get this alleged 97% of casual chatbot users to cough up yet another monthly fee? Well, maybe they can't. Generative AI is a toy, and it's only free because venture capital firms like Menlo subsidize it so heavily. What happens when the venture subsidy stops flowing and the chatbots suddenly have to pay their way? What happens when the prices multiply by five times to ten times and there's no free tier? Are you going to casually muck about with a chatbot at $200 a month? Probably not. Menlo has an answer for that. They look forward to turning chatbots into a sea of spam. Quote, We expect rapid adoption of advertising models, transaction fees, affiliate revenue, and marketplace models. Unquote. If you have to cajole employees into using the AI at work, then you need to consider maybe chatbots won't work well enough that people will use them at home for casual stuff if they have to pay, and that the 97% free users are not in fact likely to convert to paying customers, and that you did, in fact, just set all that venture money on fire, and it's not coming back. Thanks for tuning in to Pivot to AI. Please do forward this episode to the most enthusiastic chatbot fan you know, and the least enthusiastic one. Hit like and subscribe, leave a podcast review, and consider supporting Pivot to AI. Just $5 into the Patreon linked in the show notes helps us keep doing this. Thank you all, see you tomorrow, and bye for now.